you, but, uh, but he wants to speak to you also. And sometimes it's a phrase or a verse, and in the moment you need to write it down because you'll, you'll always get it best right then. Otherwise, later on you think, now how was that? Or how did God say that? And, or what did he really mean by that? And we'll add to, oftentimes, what he's trying to say to you. So I encourage you, be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. And listen to his voice and what he wants to speak through you. Maybe there's someone after service, he's saying, I want you to go pray for so-and-so. I want you to go bless so-and-so. I want you to go say this to so-and-so. Write it down so you don't forget we're all human. And so just encouraging us to stay connected. Uh, thank you for those that are staying committed and coming to, to uh, intercessory prayer beforehand from 9 to 10 over in the education building. It's essential. Um, I, as you look through, and I'm just doing a, a course right now, and some of it is the history of uh, Foursquare missions. And one of the things they, they, they really emphasize, wherever there was a, a real tremendous move of God, it was always preceded by intercessory prayer. Uh, they're where they, they went and they spent time and then it was, it was maintained by intercessory prayer. And so we can see the effects and the importance of it. And yet, how many of you found it's not easy to pray? Well, yeah, pastor, it's easy to pray. Then why don't we pray more? Huh? And so making sure that we're keeping that not just on, in our hour at church, but a lifestyle in a way that we want uh, God to be able to use us to be able to pray uh, and see his will come to pass. Um, in our life because anything that we're going to do successfully for God we're going to have to do it in prayer and through prayer first of all and then we'll see his manifested power in this life so we're going to be continue to be people of prayer now, I want to say thank you for those that are here boy Wednesday nights of um, um, over in the uh, ministering to the, the uh, children and to the youth is going fabulous everyone say praise God it's going amazing. Our workers that are there that are, are actively engaged, it's it just uh, amazing to see what, what God is doing there and to be able to, uh, to work through them and use them. I know some of you, it might be not real convenient to be there, um, but, uh, but to be able to see God use you in touching those young lives. I was just talking with someone before service, and they even remembered uh, a few years back when they were involved in some of the, uh, the, the situations that just break your heart that still today move you. And, and we want to we reach everyone that we can for Jesus. But it's imperative that we reach them as young an age as possible. We want to reach them before we have to rescue them. Amen? And so, uh, so just thank you for your involvement there in prayer and those that are able to be a part of that and continue um, to do even more with your commitment in, in there. Uh, Wednesday night, just a good time to come to church. Uh, we got a few more amens on that one. Even if you don't come, at least nod your head and people think you're one of the ones that do. But I encourage you to be here and be a part of what God is doing. Uh, last Sunday, Paula, again, you just did a fabulous job of being led by the Spirit. And it was a great testimony. We've had uh, just even um, uh, people throughout the week just sharing how much, not just the testimony of Paula, but just the work that God did through her and those that were involved in that, just the importance of just being connected to the local body of believers. And we'll share a little bit more on the importance of that in a few moments, but just the importance of being together. Last Sunday, if you were here, we gave you a little magnet um, to go home with and a verse on that just to be meditating on this week. Um, if you didn't get one, there's, there's some extras, I think, around. You can see me. It's that scripture in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And I just, it's a, just a good magnet to put up on your refrigerator to be meditating on, to be focusing on the word of the Lord. Put it up there uh, right beside the, the list of things you have to do in life, all right? Put in this first place, following after him and the importance of it. Today, I want to focus, uh, uh, for the most part, with this, the simple thought of the power of divine connection. The power of divine connection. If you will stop and look at, in your life, everything successfully that you do has a connection with a relationship with someone. I was just uh, listening to a, a podcast from a, a secular individual, well-known individual, and he had said it this way, every problem you have in life is really a relationship problem. 
every problem that you have is either because of a bad relationship or the lack of a relationship that's going to help you to fulfill that. Now, he's predominantly speaking in a business setting, but he brought it down to family, brought it down to neighborhoods, brought it down to community. And isn't it interesting that the Bible is all about relationships? It's all about relationships. It's all about the relationship that the Father wanted to have with Adam and Eve, his creation. It's all about the relationship that God Almighty had with his servant Abraham and the covenant of relationship that he brought them into. That he wanted to demonstrate that he was going to bless the whole world through his relationship with Abraham and Abraham's seed, that we would be a part of, of that family. We go to the New Testament and we have the relationship of the Father and the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, the fact that we then are invited to be a part of this divine relationship called the body of Christ, the family of God, the kingdom of God here. It's all based on relationship. And as we move forward today in, in this message, the, 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 the power of a divine connection is not just getting a hold of God so his power can just can move through our life, but having a divine connection in our relationship that will solve the problems of the world around us because of the relationship that you have with Almighty God, the relationship that you have with the Lord Jesus Christ, the relationship that you have with the body of Christ and the living word of the Lord. It's all about releasing that divine power through us. Now, we've seen that last week, and, and if you were here, you got the magnet, or you've been meditating all week long on, on Philippians 4.13, that, that simple verse, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We like that verse, don't we? Oh, that feels good on the inside. I can do all things. We could preach that one. I can. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And oftentimes, we pull that verse out when we are dealing with a difficulty in our personal life, where we are hoping, uh, maybe believing, but oftentimes just hoping that God does something to straighten out this mess I got in my life, that we are facing something that we feel deficient in being able to achieve, and maybe it's at our job. Uh, I, you know, uh, even in high school, I was... Uh, was growing in my faith. And I can remember every time I got a test thrown on my desk, oh God, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I, I just had an emergency right there that I had to deal with. This verse is true, but oftentimes is misused. It is diverted to a lesser purpose than what God really intended for us to grab a hold of in our divine purpose. Allow me, if you would, to read this out of the Amplified Translation. Because when we do this, it takes the focus off of I can to the focus over Christ working in my life. It takes the focus over my achieving and it focuses on God's ability through Christ working in me. Listen to this if you would. Philippians 4.13 from the Amplified Translation. The Apostle Paul writing here and he says, I can do all things which he has called me to do. Boy, that really narrows it down, doesn't it, in our life? What is Christ, what has God called you to do? What has Christ called you to do? Who has he created you to be? What, what is his divine purpose and calling and identity on our life? That we're not out here looking for my purpose or who I am or what I feel like, but we are seeking as believers and saying, what has he called me to do? What is his purpose for my life? He says this, which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to, fu to fulfill his purpose. The power of the resurrected Christ is in our life, is to fulfill the abilities in us and through us of his purpose. He goes on, he says, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready I am ready through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. The emphasis here, folks, is that, the, that we have the ability to do what Christ has called us to do. And what has Christ called us to do? 
What has Christ called every single one of us? No matter who you are, no matter where you've come from, no matter what situation that you're in, this is what he has called you to, to be like Jesus. That should excite us a little bit. Oftentimes we're thinking, well, maybe he's called me to be a doctor, or maybe he's called me to be a lawyer, or maybe he's called me to be a rich businessman, or maybe he's called me to be a professional performer of some sort. Whatever you do in life, he's called you to be like Christ in life. The thing that you're doing is just a place for you to be like Jesus in that situation, in that place. One is not more important than the other. The successful businessman is not any more important than the person that is is reaching out to those that are on the street. He's simply saying, wherever you're at, be like Christ. And in the natural, you can't do that. In the natural, you can make money. In the natural, you can make friends. In the natural, you can collect people. But supernaturally, you need the strength of God to be like Jesus on this earth. To sense his presence. To sense his purpose in your life. Now, none of us have arrived yet. Just turn to your neighbor and just smile. Because they, they're, not, they're not there yet. None of, us, none of us are there yet. But it's supposed to be this progressive, growing, transforming, changing into the image of Jesus in our life. Today's message is your pastor. I want to get through this, I, and, I, and I, I hope I can pray, and I get, get, get through whatever God needs to get into us today. But, but this is the, the revelation, folks. You cannot be who Christ wants you to be if you're disconnected from his power in your life. You can't be what he wants you to be if you're only momentarily, periodically, connected to his power in your life you can't be what he's called you to be that day when you stand before the lord and say what did you do with what i gave you you can't be what he's called you to be if you only connect with him on sunday mornings when you come to church periodically There has to be a transformation, an internal desire on the inside of us to stay connected to the power that is provided for us to transform our lives, renew our thinking, see our perception change of how we deal with problems in ministry that is around us, that we start to think like Jesus thinks, to be able to see through his eyes, to sense his heart of compassion, to be able to to demonstrate his authority without an arrogance in our life. Jesus wants us to stay continually connected to him. Let's take it to a a natural illustration that uh, the Lord seemed to give me, and that that is downstairs in the basement of the church, and some of you maybe maybe have have, have walked the the tunnels or whatever, but downstairs there is a, and I hope I get all my terminology correct, and you can can correct me later if I won't so I can can be more. There is a a large circuit breaker downstairs, a a large box with a big handle on on it and says on and off. And I tell you what, if that handle is in the on position, we have a connection with the, the electricity that comes into this building and flows into this building and takes care of all of the electrical needs of this facility. That, as long as that switch is in the on position, there is a current, there is a flow, there is an ability that is constantly being pumped into this facility. But if that breaker comes down, if that arm is pulled down to the off position, there is a disconnect. Everyone say disconnect. There is a disconnect. And everything goes dead here. Nothing changes in the power plant. Nothing changes to just on the other side of that box. But because of the decision to disconnect from that point on, everything is dead. In our lives, we've got to make sure that we keep the connection on. That we intentionally keep the connection and the flow going into our lives. Let me tell you real quickly, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is never a question of the power flow that comes from him to work in our lives, to transform and to change our lives. 
There's never a question of his ability. Almighty God, he is not evolving. He is all powerful. He doesn't get more power. You don't have to worry about a draining of him. We're hearing a lot right now in some of the states uh, or they're having brownouts or, or, or blackouts and they're encouraging you, don't put too much of a demand on the grid because it can't handle it. Don't put too much demand on the, on the grid because, because the power company can't keep up with the demand. And so people have to, have to kind of uh, 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 scale back. Can you imagine living without electricity? Can you imagine living without electricity? We, every so often, my goodness, if the power just uh, goes off for about an hour, people are like, you know, calling the power company, telling them that there's an outage. I mean, you hear generators all of a sudden start kicking on around you. We have people that have those because you can't go just minutes without, uh, without that electricity. We got to have a, a, a life without electricity. What would that be like? To some, it would be a, it would be a break. But, but, but today, what we're emphasizing is this, folks. There's no power shortage from the God side of the connection. And so we are the ones that need to take the responsibility of keeping the connection on so there is this divine flow in our life. You will never have to worry about a brownout in the kingdom of God. You never have to worry about a blackout. You never have to worry about God saying, just tone it down a little bit. You're drawing too much power from me at this time. He is ever ready to work through us, and we never have to worry about his capacity to meet the need that we are facing in our life. But the question is, are we staying connected with him? Are we staying connected with what he wants to do? His divine call to see our life transformed into change into the image of Jesus. Now, to every one of you in this room, different things are coming to your heart right now. To some, that is developing character that needs to be more Christ-like. To others, there's, there is ministry that he's challenging you to do that is more Christ-like, that, that doing the works that Jesus did. To others of you, that it is, it is uh, allowing the words of the Lord that he has spoken to you to, to take deeper root in your life. Different things are being stirred within you, and I understand that. That's why we keep the, the circuit connected. We keep that power flowing. To some, there's worries and doubts and fears that want to bring that, that, that disconnect in there. And you need to say, no, I'm keeping this connection on. I need the flow of God's power in my life. I don't know about you. There's not a day I don't need the power of God flowing in my life. I don't know about you. There's not a day my family doesn't need this guy allowing the power of God to transform and change my character to be more like Jesus than the old creature that still lurks around in my flesh. Jesus, in John chapter 15, if you would turn there quickly, gives us a illustration and divine revelation of how to stay connected because the reality is this if there's no divine connection there's no achieving the divine call of God in your life you can't do it without the power of God working through you it's the way he set it up it's what he's provided for us he didn't ask us just to go to church and do something nice for people once in a while. He didn't ask you just to put some money in the offering and he'll bless your life. He asked us to give our lives completely over to him so that we could be transformed and be like him. That we would take on his resemblance. That we would be imitators of the Father like dear lovely, dear children that are loved of the Father, that we would be conformed into the image of Jesus. That's a process that goes on, and it needs the divine power of God to bring it to pass in our individual lives. But if there's no divine connection, then there's no divine achievement. How connected are you to the flow? How connected are you to the divine power of God? How connected are you to the, the holy current of the Spirit of God in your daily life. How connected are you? Jesus gives us this wonderful illustration, John 15, and today I'll be reading out of the uh, New Living Translation. I know some of you have the New Living Translation, so today we'll be re reading out of the New Living Translation, John chapter 15, verse 1. Jesus has these tremendous words, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. 
He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they might produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message that I've given to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And folks, if you don't have this next one underlined, I appreciate if you did. You cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Makes it pretty simple, doesn't it, folks? He goes on in verse 5, and he says, Yes, yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. There's a revelation right there. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into the pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask anything you want and it will be granted you. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. You see, the very end of this portion of Scripture that we just read is really the climax of what we're heading, that we are disciples of Jesus and living in a way that he is glorified, that we are producing much fruit as a result of the divine connection and the flow of his supernatural power or ability through our lives that results in a tremendous harvest in our life. God wants you to have a bountiful blessing of harvest in your life that results because of your connection with him that brings glory to the Father. Jesus is giving us this amazing illustration. I so appreciate the simplicity of the illustration that we can understand it and, and quickly apply it to our own lives. That, that this, this spiritual application, you know, there's so many things we could pull out, but let's stay connected with this, this thought of the, the divine power flowing through our lives. This divine power that Jesus is revealing to us is available. That he says is the Father's created way to produce his will in this life. But here's also the thought we need to hold on to. This also reveals to us and also reveals to the enemy how to stop us from producing for the kingdom of God. is simply to sever us, to get us to pull down the disconnect get us to give up in our lives. We like that scripture in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. But put that in connection with the verse we just read there in John 15, 5, where Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. You put those together and you get this understanding that all that we really are going to accomplish or fulfill for the kingdom of God has to be with a divine connection along the way. So what are, how do we stay connected? What does this mean to stay connected to the, the, the vine in our life? How do we do that? What's it look like? Well, let's just break it down simply. First of all, you, you have to stay connected with the personal relationship of Jesus Christ in your life. Each one of us need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. The sad thing is we've heard this so many times that we don't even think this is amazing anymore. To think that Almighty God, through the, predemptive, or the redemptive plan that he had from the beginning of creation, to redeem us so that he could have a divine connection with us. Not just so that we could hang out in church, not just so that we could have the name Christian in our life, but that we could be children of Almighty God in our life. That we could become the temple of the Holy Spirit. That we individually could be engrafted into him, to be one, to be united again with him. That individually, it's not being a part of a particular denomination. It's not associating with a particular uh, list of do's and don'ts, but it goes back to this connection that we have with him. Jesus says here in John 15, 4, he says, remain in me. Here's a concern I have as a pastor people that come forward and sign a, a card of commitment, people that come forward and just pray a prayer, people that say that they used to go to church, people that say that they believe in God, but do they remain in Christ? 
Is there a connection that's there that is solid, that is increasing, that is growing? Jesus says, remain in me and I will remain in you. The decision is on our part. Do you know anybody that used to be connected to Jesus? You know anybody that used to have a strong relationship personally with the Lord? Jesus is telling us today that we need to be aware of our personal connection with him. I want to just ask, is your breaker box turned on? Do you have a divine connection with the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm not asking you, are you a member of a church? I'm not asking you if you used to pray a prayer sometime. I'm asking you right now, are you in a... Rem- uh, let's just say, if I was to look at your Facebook, are you in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Is there a connection there? Do you care if there's a connection there? Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. In Romans 11, Paul says, you must be engrafted into this wonderful new relationship. How are you living after you got saved in your life? After you got born again, after you were engrafted? Do you have that continual connection with the Lord in your life? How valuable is it? How important is it to you? Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. Again, the New Living Translation here. The Apostle Paul starts to, uh, this amazing theologian, this, this man that had, uh, had incredible uh, manifestations uh, of the power of God in his life. This, this individual who, who wrote some, some two-thirds of, of, the, of the New Testament, of the epistles that we have to us today, this great revelation in, in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. Listen to the words of this man that had achieved so much this great apostle this amazing individual that we we look back to and see the great missionary trips that he took and achievements that he did he says I once thought these things were valuable you should just draw a line if you're taking notes right now you you put in there what what used to be valuable to you what used to be important to you what used to be significant to you what well, used to be something that, that, that you kept on a higher shelf so the kids, when they, grandkids, when they came over, they didn't knock that one off or, 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 or something didn't happen. What is it that you, you thought was so valuable that you didn't want someone to steal it so you went and locked it up in the bank so that you, no one could get to it but you never used it either? Well, what is it in your life that you thought was so valuable? Paul said, I thought these things that were valuable. But, but he says this, But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus in my life. I want to ask you, are you there yet? Are you at a point where you're saying there is no relationship, no situation, no job, no amount of money, no, no reputation to me is as important as compared to knowing Jesus in my life. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care what opposition comes to me. I don't care what I lose in this world. It is all worthless compared to you can come and steal the lint out of my pocket I'm not going to fight you over it that's what it's like when people try to come and take away from you compared to knowing the Lord Jesus Christ in your life are you there and the sad thing is most Christians aren't most of us have a when I die go to heaven relationship instead of this constant current of the divine presence of God in our life that we have this relationship with him personally and I'm saved I'm saved I'm saved from hell I'm saved from my sins I'm saved from myself I'm saved from the attacks of the enemy I'm saved from the lures of this world the temporal things of this life that want to try to control me so much and cause me to make decisions I'm saved I'm delivered from all of those things I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven but along the way I've just got a growing revelation of the presence of Christ in my life He goes on and says, for his sake, I have, I have discarded everything else, counting all as garbage. You know, it's easy to sort through your stuff when you just all put garbage over all of it. 
It's easy to sort through, what should I do with this or what should I do with that, when it just all is garbage along the way. For his sake, I discard everything, counting it all as garbage, that I could gain Christ and become one with him. There's that union. There's that oneness that we're talking about. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through Jesus Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ. We could stop there and, uh, and you could read on later your, yourself. But, but the, the thing is that Paul is saying that as I'm going forward in my relationship with the Lord and this personal connection that I have with him, this, this I am the vine uh, and, and, and branches and, and fruit that is growing, that Jesus is demonstrating that he's saying he's the vine and we're the branches, that I want to stay connected to him like no other so that his power can throw, flow through my life and transform me. I consider everything else loss compared to that in my life. Any real relationship you have will cost you something along the way. It's not a bad thing. It's just a revelation along the way. Any relationship you have is going to cost you. But the difference is when it's a positive relationship we're in, we see it as an investment. When I have a positive relationship with my wife, it's not that I don't get my way all the time. I get an investment. There's a, I give her her way once in a while. And because of that, then she gives me my way, usually eventually along the way. Now, but, but what I'm saying is, is any relationship that we're in, there's an investment that goes into it. I'm going to have to, I'm going to give into this. I want to be a part of this. This is something that I value. This is something I want to hold on to. And other things that seemingly would cost me, actually, they're not valuable enough to keep in my life because I consider this relationship more valuable. Let me ask you this. How, how or what are you investing in your relationship with Jesus? Maybe I could say it this way. What does it cost you to have a relationship with Jesus? What does it cost you? What are you investing in this personal relationship with him? What are you putting into this that's causing it to grow? What are you allowing it to transform and to change? You know, it, 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 it's amazing in our life uh, that we, we, we come to know Jesus Christ as our Savior, but we should be growing in that relationship. Is your relationship with Christ flourishing? Is your relationship with Christ deepening? Is your relationship with him strengthening? Those are all things that he wants. Jesus is the one that wants to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's the one that said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. He's the one that made a way. And I was just talking with Mike earlier about the sacrifice that Jesus was willing to go through so we could have this relationship. He's done a lot for the investment of this relationship. What are we doing in it? I'm not asking you to go get stripes on your back. I, I'm not asking you to go and, and, and get, uh, get disciplined someplace because of your walk with Christ. But I'm saying that there's nothing in our life that should be equal to desiring it. I'm not saying you can't have a TV in your house. I'm just saying how connected to Christ really are you? How committed are you in your relationship with him? What does it cost you to stay connected? connected what is it what is it seen as as valuable in your life do you only go to jesus when you've got a problem do you only go to jesus when you need a miracle do you only go to jesus when life is is falling up around apart around you and then you go to him and say yeah do something but folks i want you to know you need to start your day with a fresh expression of your appreciation of the commitment that you have with the lord jesus christ in your life and live out that day living it for Jesus. Paul said it this way, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But it's not me, it's Christ living through me. He had the divine connection with his relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The thing we could see quickly after that where Jesus is telling us, how do you stay connected to me? Number one, your relationship. Number two, stay connected to the body of Christ, his church. Stay connected to Christ, stay connected to his body, the church. Can I get an amen to everybody here on Sunday morning? Stay connected to his body. He said it this way in John 15, 5. He said, yes, I am the vine, 
and you are the branches, plural. A vine would be silly to just have one branch. He wants the vine to have branches, the one vine to stay connected. Now, I know that uh, really theologically we could say he's talking about the universal church because there's just one, one vine here, and I'm not opposed to that. But he has the local church, the local body, for us to come together, the significance, the important for us to come together. He said that you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. It's incredible when there's a, a them, what we can accomplish and what we can do. And when there's a them where we fulfill the will and the plan of God, where in our community, right, locally, that we're able to demonstrate the power of Christ in our lives and the relationship that we have working together. I know every one of us in this room have heard someone say, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And that's true. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. But according to Jesus, Christians should be connected to the one vine. There should be a place where we come together, that, that we're able to draw nourishment together, that we're able to produce fruit together, that we're able to share our giftings together as the body of Christ. Quickly turn over to Ephesians 4 where the Apostle Paul dealt with this on the importance of a, of a local group of believers that are coming together, that the, that the church, and, and may we, we quickly, and, and I think you've got it at Grandview, but I just need to say it publicly because it has been so uh, well, we'll just say, just say this. Church is more about what you put into it, not what you get out of it. Church is, is not just, well, I'm going to go somewhere where I get something. You will. You should. But church should be someplace where you go that you give something. If we're going to be like Jesus, Jesus went around being a blessing. Jesus went around ministering to those that were in need. Jesus went around helping those that were hurting. Jesus went around encouraging those that were discouraged. Jesus went around doing and serving, not just in church services. Many of the miracles that Jesus did was along the way as he was going from one city to the next. As the church, as we, the church, the local body of believers, as we come together, our mindset should not be just what do I get out of it, but what am I putting into it? What's my part? How do I connect? You know, the, the church is, is referred to like a body, and, and Art was just a, was referring to this uh, last Wednesday night, I believe it, that there's, there's a head, but the, the majority of the body is not a head. I kind of got a, a little bit of a big head, not that I think much of myself, it's just uh, anatomy-wise, I just, my head's a little big, so, but, but, but really proportionally, the rest of the body is so much more than just the head, and how important the body is, every part coming together, doing its part, that's the local church, that it's not just a head up here talking, but it is a body that is doing what God has called us to do. The Apostle Paul wrote to us here in Ephesians chapter 4, and starting in verse 11 through 16. And he's, what he's doing is he is revealing to us that if we are connected to the, the vine, that the branches have not just the power of God flowing to us, but the power of God that flows through us. That the power of God, that great uh, breaker box downstairs, it's turned on, so the power is coming through that, but then the switches in the different rooms and different positions, the different air conditioners, they all have individual switches or little breakers on them that have to be turned on also. So every single one of us need the power flowing to us, but then we need to be having our breaker turned on so the power of God continues to flow through us along the way also. Paul said it this way in Ephesians 4.11. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostle, the prophets, evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Listen, verse 11, listen real carefully. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do the work and build up the church, the body of Christ. I got one amen and a couple of head shakes on that one. How far... Has the concept of church today drifted? 
from this right here. Think of the doctrinal drift that has gone on over time that church is now a place that I look to see whether I fit in in the sense of whether I like the people that go there, whether I like the sermon the preacher preaches, whether I like that kind of music, whether I like its location, whether I like how long the service is. Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says the five ministry gifts are given so that you, the body of Christ, may do the work of the ministry. I don't usually use four-letter words in church, but W-O-R-K, the work of the ministry that goes on is our responsibility as the body of Christ. And every single one of us are needed to be able to accomplish that work. He goes on here in verse 13, he says, this will continue until, the, until all come to such a unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord. Notice again, the focus is on being Christ-like, measuring up to the full and complete stature of Christ, standard of Christ. Verse 14, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed uh, 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 and blown uh, uh, about every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. Just turn your neighbor and smile and say, you're special. You're special. You're special. Every one of us have a special work. Every one of us have a special purpose. Every one of us are called, but, it, but, but, but even in our individual calling, the ultimate purpose in that is that we become the body of Christ. That we are, in one sense, lose our individuality as we come together to accomplish his work here in this earth. And we come together by the supernatural presence of the Holy Spirit's power working through us, aware of these, these graces, this, uh, this, this, this supernatural giftings that he's put into our lives, that we come and we share them with one another. We give them and invest them in one another's lives. We understand that we should be a part of a church that is different than one another. And we come together and then we represent who Jesus is in this day. The, uh, let me read that again. As each part does his own special work, it helps the other parts grow. Isn't that amazing? When you do what you're supposed to do, it helps others do what they're supposed to do, which helps you do what you're supposed to do. It's this continual action that goes on so that the whole body is healthy and growing in full love. Wow. It should be no wonder why the adversary tries so hard to divide the body of Christ. It, it shouldn't surprise us why it's so difficult for us to come to church. Because if we're not even coming to church, it's difficult for us to be the church. Isn't it interesting that church becomes an option instead of a priority? It's not that we're just trying to fill the seats, and it's not that we're trying to just get more money in the offering, but what we're trying to do is for us to fulfill our special purpose connected as the body of Christ. I went ahead and brought my whole body to church today. I didn't say, you know what, I'm right-handed, so I really don't need my left hand. I can get by with it, so I'll just leave my left hand at home. No, that's got my wedding ring on it. My wife thought I needed to bring my left hand along with me. You know, I, I, I'm, uh, it's not that we, uh, I'm going to be speaking, so I don't need my ears today. So I'm just going to leave them at home. They've got, they can well, listen to, uh, to TV while I'm gone because I don't need my ears today because I'm just going to be speaking. It's when my whole body showed up that I was able to do the m most productive work that's called me to do. And when we all see our significance, our special part that we play, that we connect together by God's orchestrated work, 
that we are all united, that the main switch is turned on, and the switch in my spirit is turned on, so the power of God can flow through me, and I can encourage someone else, bless someone else, pray for someone else, do something for somebody else, that I start to find the excitement, the joy, that the love of God is flowing through me, and I start to realize that we are the body of Christ, and and in no other situation and setting would this work. It's where we understand that when we come together and have this divine connection, but whose responsibility is it for you to have a connection with Jesus? Whose responsibility is it for you to have a connection to the church? Do we value these relationships? Do we live like we value these relationships? Again, folks, it's not that we're trying to just get more people to show up at church. We're trying to get more people connected spiritually to their, their purpose so that the power of this divine connection can continue to flow through our lives to accomplish his purpose and his will in our life. How connected are you to Christ personally? How connected are you to the body of Christ, to the local church? Well, I don't know anybody at church, Pastor then get to know somebody and introduce yourself to somebody. I don't know where I would fit at church. Uh, Just be here. Be a part of things. Uh, Be here during service. Find someone that's sitting by themselves and greet them. Talk to them for a moment. You might be surprised what the Holy Spirit would speak through you in that moment. Find out what is something that needs to be done. Well, we need, need some help now. Well, I don't know if I want to do that. Well, you know, then we can either find something else or sometimes, sometimes we, sometimes we even have to do stuff that, that we don't want to do. Do you know that? Do, do, do you know that? Sometimes we got to do stuff that we don't even want to do. I tell you the other day, Thursday, uh, uh, I mean, Paula did such a good job of, of testifying last week, I didn't get a chance to preach my sermon. So I had my sermon all ready for this week. That was good news, wasn't it? That's good news. Here's the bad news of that. That meant Thursday I didn't have to spend time studying, so it was a great day to go uh, cut the shrubs outside. That was bad news. Well, so worked out, all, out there all day uh, or in the shrubs. Do you think I wanted to do that? No, I didn't want to do that. Do you think the thought came to my mind, there should be someone else in this church out here doing these shrubs? <laughs> possibly. Possibly that thought came to my mind. But there was then this voice that came to me, so whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. So am I going to do something I don't want to do as unto the Lord and just be thankful for the opportunity to be able to do it? I was out there, had, my, had the, the gas trimmers out there, had flashbacks from when we used to be on the other side of town when we used to do shrubs over there and had the different long drop cord you have to drag along with you and cut and then the drop cord would get disconnected one way or another. <laughs> Sometimes I'd disconnect it when I was cutting. But, uh, you know, had grass trimmer, I thought, a gas trimmer. Oh, God, thank you. You blessed our church enough that I've got a gas trimmer now that I can get this done a lot quicker and get it done faster. Gosh, that's kind of a silly illustration. No, it's a practical application. There's times that there's things that need to get done that you might not feel comfortable doing or you don't want to do or your flesh doesn't want to do. But you need to find a spiritual way to, to get connected and do what needs to be done along the way and see the power of God flow through your life and be fruitful, and to be fruitful, and not worry about someone patting you on the back. I didn't say that illustration, so everybody will come up afterwards and tell me how nice the shrubs were. Actually, I don't want you to look at the shrubs when you leave. As one man said, some shrubs are just ugly. They're just ugly. There ain't nothing going to do about it. Well, how are you staying connected? Do you see it as valuable? Next week, we're going to go to the next one, which is probably the most, most obvious one. But this is the one I want you to pause and think on this week. If you weren't here, would it affect the health of this church? And if it wouldn't, then you need to change. Because according to Paul's writings, every person has a special gift that brings health to the whole body. And it's not about your gift It's about the health of the body that reflects Christ. How 
And I'm not saying it in any kind of a guilt way. I'm saying it in a discovery way. God, what do you want to do through me when I turn this switch on? Holy Father, we thank you for your calling, your desire to have relationship with us. Holy Spirit, thank you for being the power of God present in our life and speaking to us. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for living such self-consuming lives. Forgive us for not making room for you in everything that we do. Forgive us for devaluing our relationship with you and the connection that we should have with your local body. We ask that the, the presence of the Spirit of God would speak to us, convict us deep on the inside so that we can be truly doing your work, that we don't just make it to heaven, but we make a difference here on earth because of the power of the Holy Spirit transforming and changing our lives. May we as individuals this week invest in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. May we this week invest in the local body, reveal to speak to us, give us something we can do that is going to bring health to this church for your glory. Give us something that you want us to pray something you want us to say, something that we can do that is going to make a difference for your glory and the health of this church so that you will be glorified. That's our goal. That's our desire. In Jesus' name, amen. And as I say on a regular basis, if you need prayer, find someone around you to pray. If you feel like you've got someone you need to go pray for, just go ahead and do what the Holy Spirit has put on your heart to do. But you, being the body, does the work of the ministry. So we'll see you Wednesday night, filled up, fired up, and some fresh testimonies of how God is using your life. Go out, make sure if you were that person, your backpack is unloaded, and mercy and grace is walking on you, making it easier as you go forward. And you are called to be that representative of Jesus as his divine soldiers of the Lord. So go make a difference in the world around you. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you on Wednesday night.